Yeah, I see it. Oh, now it is. Okay, yeah, so is. anyway, we, we, we missed the first one. But now we, we are recording, okay. Okay, thank you, Fidel. Did you start it from the beginning? You got everything, yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, so what was the other question, guys? Was it fine? Yeah, we were just double checking to make sure that you uh, change your term back oh, yeah. okay. after you do your U substitution. Yeah. Okay. So if you're happy about this one, I'm not going to just uh, compute the other cases or the other types, but at least we can learn about the, the setting. Okay. So how do I uh, try in the other types or the other directions? Since since your uh, your uh, what is it x is here y is here z is here so since you have really symmetrical in any direction symmetrical graph in any direction so you can just really say okay how about if I start from this plane it's fine so if if I start from this plane. Then I will have my two dimensional graph as y and z. So then I have to take care of y and z first. X is last. Right? But the process really is really similar to what we have done because that was just one intersection, one intersection, and this is just really y plus z equals one. So that's a two dimensional. I can decide to do either in type one or type two. And then if I just decided to do type one, so you just say y is first. So you go from zero to one. And then uh, you just uh, have the next 10, which is the z. And then this is for the dz direction, which we started from the, the line of uh, z equals zero. And we end up with the line of z equals one minus y. Z equals one minus y. Okay, so I'm writing for the z. I solve my equation for the z, right? So then I can just really go to the third one, whatever left, right? So I take care of my z, I take care of my y, x left. So if I'm writing for the z, I really need to move along the x axis, right? So sorry, I'm writing for the x. So I'm writing for the x, I'm moving along the x axis. So this is the limit for the x. X is increasing in this direction. So you have to start from here and then you have to end by the here, right? So you have started from uh, the uh, plane is right over here, which is the X, I will say inside, because X is just going from inside to outside. So X inside, the first thing that I hit is just really YZ plane, and then the, uh, the X outside uh, uh, is just really the plane equation, which is one minus, uh, y minus z, right? So it was originally x plus y plus z equals one. If I solve it for x, is one minus y minus z, right? So this is just the limits for the x. And then I can start over and integrate again. Does it make sense? Do you see it's possible to do in all directions? Yeah, you just have to understand where to manipulate. Which one, which one left now? Which one we haven't tried it? Uh, the X Z plane. Okay, so this is X, this is Z, and this is if you want to go in X Z plane. So if you want to go the X Z plane, you can do the same thing, right? So you can just really make the two dimensional graph to be X and the Z. So you're making two dimensional graph to be X and Z, and then, uh, you have to take care of X and Z first, last is the Y, right? So one more time, if I take care of this, it's just from zero to one. So X is from zero to one. This is the X axis. So X is from zero to one. And then the Z is the next one, which I just move along the Z axis. This is zero. And this was X plus Z equals one. So if I'm writing for Z, I need to solve for Z. So it's just moving from zero to one minus X. That's for DZ. Is it fine by now? Do you agree? Yeah, that makes sense. Any other voice? Yes, no? 
Yes, that's all. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, okay, perfect. So what is left? Why? So how the Y is increasing? The Y is always increasing from left to the right, right? So you are moving from left to the right. So means the first thing that you move from the left. Uh, unmute yourself. Uh, thank you. So the this is Y equals. Uh, so this is y equals zero, and that's x z plane exactly. I will say y left because uh, the y is moving from left to the right. So this is y y right. So the bigger one is the right one. So which was one minus x minus z. Again, I'm writing for y, so I have to just uh, solve it for the y, and then whatever is inside. And all of these things is possible. I think the first one was just more clear for us because we've seen always the shadow or the projection, the base to be XY plane. But these are just really all other possibilities, okay? So again, I don't care which one is type one, type two, type three, as long as you decided to do, just make this one to be the projection or the start point, we are fine with that, okay? Okay, no problem. Any any question? Any question, guys? Here? No, I think uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so then the next uh, problem is just really bringing. Okay, so this is the number that we got. How about if I just get something in circular and at the same time, I prefer to go with the polar because polar gives me easier uh, computations, okay? So polar gives me easier computation. That's, poss that's possible, right? So again, uh, the graph is given to me. If not, I can graph it by myself. I will actually, because I want to shade the region that I'm looking for. Uh, what is the region of integration? So the, the region of integration, it says this should be a paraboloid right over here. But if I remember the typical one was like this, and then that goes this direction. This is a typical one. So this is a typical one. We've seen it many times is in Z direction because Z is the first degree. This is in Y direction because Y is the first degree, right? So that's why it goes in Y direction. And then uh, it says a stop at Y equals 40 makes sense. It has to stop somewhere. It doesn't go to, to, to the infinity. So this is making shorter. I don't want to be that much big. Uh, this is a graph. So now is you to decide which projection is easier for you to see and to set the limits of integration. Any idea? The XZ plane? Okay. Yes, I agree with the XZ plane, but any other idea? It's, it doesn't mean the others are not possible. They are all possible. I can just go with this, uh, what is it? Uh, projection on the uh, XY plane. So if I go by projection, I will erase it, okay? So if I go by projection on XY plane, this is just really the shadow. This is the base. This is the cutting when you have a Z equals zero. So that's just possible. It doesn't mean it's not possible, but that's just really harder to set the limits of integration. We prefer always whatever is in circle form because polar has just really nice limits of integration and integration, okay? So I'm going to listen to you and just make the projection. Again, imagine there is a sun right over here and it's at noon and it's just really your straight shadow. So then you have to make the straight shadow right over here and this is just going to be one circle. Right, so this is going to be one circle, which is the shadow of your graph. Okay, so this is the shadow of your graph. I'm going to make it in color that's supposed to be. Uh, okay, so the two dimensional graph was a circle with the radius of? Four. 
four or two? Two. Oh, sorry, radius of two. <laughs> yeah, you are right. So is R is square four and then R is just a two. So this is just really the, the limits of integration for X and Y and the last one is the Z. Okay, I'm going to erase my lovely sun right over here, okay. So, are you ready? I agree with me, I have to go with the polar. Uh, yeah. So what's the limits for the angle? Remain, from, remember, this is zero from? Zero to two pi. Zero to two pi. Okay. And then next turn, R. What's the limits for the R? Zero to two. Yes, that's R is increasing, right? So R is always pointing out from the origin, starting the shadow from the origin and ending the shadow to the end of the circle, which is the radius of the two. I don't forget mm -hmm. about that uh, extra Jacobian or factor that I have R over here. Mm -hmm. How do you find R again? Uh, it's R always uh, starting from the origin. R is always the radius starting from the origin pointing out okay so you have to start the shadow region from the origin and you have the end point of the circle which is r equals to make sense yes Silvio. did you see r This is the R. Four into x squared plus z squared, and that's how you get R. Oh, how to get the R equals? Okay, yeah, that that's the other thing. Yes, so you have y equals x squared plus z squared is the parabolic, y equals four, and then you set them equal. So that's exactly where is the intersection. Yeah, you set them equal. There were two planes. You set them equal. The intersection gives you the radius. Fine. Move on. Okay. So then I have the last one that was my XY. Okay. So this is just really replacing by my DX DY. Right, so this is replacing by dx dy. So what's the last one left? The dz, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I'm so sorry. That was a mistake, huh? So that was what? You did take care of your dx and okay. then dz. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you did take care of, so that was a mistake, right? So I should write dz. So that was xz plane x z plane okay so this is the x and the z you take care of these two so then the y left right so then the y left so if the dy left i should move along the y axis y is from left to the right so y is from left to the right so if i go from left to the right what is the uh, first thing that i hit zero uh, or your x z plane Actually, the graph is this one, remember? Y equals zero, four, I mean. This is the graph. Yeah. What's the start? So you're point? hitting your X squared plus Z squared. First, right? So I'm hitting X squared plus Z squared, which is the R squared because I don't see any X and Z anymore, mm. right? So I wrote it in polar system, right? right? So this is X squared plus Z squared equals R squared. Right, so this is just the heating first. This is the heating first. And then heating last was the uh, four. Yeah, why go four? Okay. And I have had something inside. I'm going to rewrite this one, right? So I have had this one inside, okay? So remember there was integrand inside. So x squared plus z squared. In this setting, it was, R square, 
right? In this setting, we have decided to make this x squared plus z squared to be polar and to be r squared. Is that okay? So for these ones, when we change our regions to polar and uh, and we have a third plane like we do now with our, our y, um, we will still enter in dy or dx or dz, whatever we do um, on the inside, that's still going to be in terms of dy, dx or dz. Yeah. So whatever is inside, it yeah. has to be it has to be in terms of r and theta, right? Not x and z anymore, yeah. because you have changed your x and z to be polar. Okay. So I mean, I guess my main question was um, whether or not the um, this dy would be written as something else. Like, are we going to change that form? We re rewrote dx and dz as dr and d theta. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's a good question, right? So this is a good question, actually, starting from 12.6. That's just what we want to do. Yes, so you keep the uh, last one, whatever left, right? So if okay. X is the last one left, so is X, whatever Y is left, so Y is Y. That's a good question. Fine? Yeah, I get that. Okay, so I think the integration is fine. Let's just say, do we have anything? So you have R over here, another R there, so that gives you R square. So if integrating with respect to Y, R is going to be a constant, so that's just really Y plug in R square and then four, right? Is it okay? Then I go from zero to two pi. So this is from zero to two. And then I uh, plug in the upper limit minus lower limit. And then the next term is R, the next term is the theta. I, th I think this is just really straightforward uh, integration. So the four R to the second is cubed divided by three. And then I have R square over here, another square here is R4. So then integration is five divided by five. And then you have to plug in your numbers. So that gives you something which is just number. And then you have to multiply by whatever is integration of zero to two pi d theta. Okay, so uh, that's just going to be a number. I don't know how big because it's two to the third is eight. And then two to the fifth is 32. And then multiply by two pi, okay? It doesn't matter what's the number, it's just really something. Move on. Uh, could you go back up a little bit? I want to see what's the last number to cheat. One. Okay, so that was this section actually. The only thing that left for this one 
is a little bit of the application and one of them I, I said at the beginning of the class and that's just really saying if you can find the volume by double integral so this is volume in double integral so this is going to be integration of something right so you just need to have one integrand inside okay so if i go to the picture what does it mean so you have had a graph of z equals f of xy right so then you start to make the limits of integration by your shadow so the shadow of this picture gives you the limits of integration i'm going to call it the d which is just really the base of your graph and then you just say this is just the roof this is the z top huh then i integrate over the z top that gives me the volume right so then now i know the triple integration now i say okay i set my limits of integration in d a to be my uh, type one type two or whatever is two dimensional graph and then i have my z left my z left so then when i'm moving on the z direction this is the base which is the origin or the x y plane and then this is my z top so i'm moving from zero to the z top which is f of x y okay so this is going to be exactly the same as whatever we have learned over here because when i integrate in terms of the z that gives me z plug in zero to the f of x y da and then you have to plug in upper limit minus lower limit which is zero so if i have the volume in double integration i do have something to integrate which is just really disease or the surfaces but if i have triple integration to uh, do the volume i do not have any integrand okay so it's possible to do in both ways it's basically the same and it depends on whether you want to take care of your z in here for the limit or you want to take care of your z to be your integrand they are the same does it make sense Does it make sense? Hello. Do you hear me? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, the other application uh, is just really finding the mass uh the formula here it says i mean because you have the the formula always so you don't have to really worry about to memorize the formula but this is just just always a rule for ever right so whenever you want to get the mass is really integration of the density mass is integration of density then it depends on what type of things object you have on your hand so if you have a two-dimensional like a plate uh, like a lamina so if you have a two-dimensional things on your hand so then the mass is double integration of density if you have a solid or you have a three-dimensional thing then your mass is triple integration of your density if you have single like a wire like a curve uh, one dimensional then the mass is uh, what we will learn in actually next next section next chapter sorry so it's just really what we call line integration okay so it depends on which dimensional thing or object is on your hand you have to change this formula if it is a two-dimensional mass is double integration of rho if it is triple triple or solid or three-dimensional so it's the triple integration of the density and then if it's just single which is the next chapter is going to be the line integration as we haven't learned yet okay so but the rule is always the same mass is integration of density okay so depends on is your one dimensional thing two dimensional or three dimensional it changed the single double or triple integration 
And again, this is the set of formulas. Uh, the moment of inertia, if you haven't seen it, is just something in physics. So the moment of inertia for any solid or for any two dimensional, it has a list of formulas. Since you have a formula, all I want to practice is just really set the limits of integration. So if I know how, how to set the limits of integration, I'm done. I can just integrate directly, okay? So the centroid or center of mass is something which is in physics. What it says, if you want to get the X bar, Y bar, Z bar, so you have to do really take care of your triple integration if it is a three dimensional graph. So the top is going to be, I'm going to rewrite the formula in the way that I like it uh, right over here. So this is a three dimensional nice graph. It has many nice uh, notes. So if I'm doing the X bar, it's just really triple integration of X rho dV divided by triple, in triple integration of rho, which is rho density dV. If I'm doing Y bar, it's triple integration of Y rho dV divided by triple integration of rho, which is the density exactly. And uh, if I'm doing the Z bar, it's triple integration of Z dV divided by triple integration of D Oops, I, I left my row. Okay, so that's how you get your centroid. That's how you get the center of mass. Center of mass, centroid. Okay, so again, I'm not worried about the formula. I'm not worried about the concepts of centroid or center of mass or physics concept. All I need to practice here as just calculus class, how to set the limits of integration for any given integral. Can you give me a sec to finish copying those equations? Mm -hmm. I like this question for so many reasons because we have to really remember so many things that we have learned in the other chapters, right? So uh, I'll try to make the graph. Uh, I think it's just better to make the graph like this because it has X. Okay. Uh, first thing that I have to find the center of the mass is just really the, the three-dimensional solid. What is the three-dimensional solid? I'm not worried about the rho because it's not given to me. So the constant density means the rho is just really k, something constant. So this means the rho of x, y, z is constant, is some number. We don't know what it is. And then what is just really important for me is to see the graph to set the limits of integration, right? I have a paraboloid cylinder, so which is x equals y square. Okay, so I'm going to make it to the this color, which is x equals y square. This is x equals y square, but the z is missing. So I'm going to stretch this one. in the z direction, okay? So this is x equals y squared, z is missing, so you're searching in the z direction. That's paraboloid uh, cylinder. We don't have any problem with the, with the x equals one because it's just maybe make it green because x equals one is right here. So this is the plane of x equals one. This is the plane of x equals one.
There is something wrong with my lines, huh? Okay, so this is a plane of x equals one. I have one more plane, which is uh, maybe make it in light blue, uh, which is just this one, x equals z. Uh, so if this is just really the plane of x and z, uh, when I say x equals z, it's just really right in the middle. So it seems something is cutting this graph in this slant form, okay? So then I'm going to just cut my graph right over here, right? So this is what's happening for the graph. So it's making uh, this is Uh, x equals z plane x equals z plane okay uh, do you see which way are you looking for i mean where is your solid anyone can see where is my solid Yes, are you okay? If you see where is my solid, it's just really between the, uh, really right inside here, right? So this is just really the entire solid that I'm looking for. Okay, can you tell me which way is easier to project? Or which way you prefer to project? mind scrolling back down for just a second i just wanted to finish my graph you you draw a little bit better than i do anyone any idea which projection do you prefer do you want to start with the xy plane do you want to start with the xz plane or do you want to start xz plane uh Sorry, why Z plane? Why? Backwards, it's kind of hard to tell. Why Z plane? I'm good. Thank you. Now you're good. Tell me which way do you prefer? Why Z plane? Why Z plane? If you do it in YZ plane, uh, let's see. When I do in YZ plane, do you see what's a, what's a picture of your YZ plane or projection of your YZ plane? The, uh, uh, like almost a rectangle? It seems it's a rectangle. It seems yeah. it's a rectangle. How far the Y goes? Mm. Plus minus one, because it's just intersection with X equals one. Right, so this is X equals one. So then y squared equals one, it gives you y equals plus, plus minus, minus one. one. Okay. And then if you can see where is the z, then we are fine. I mean, uh, this is just what the plan was. I'm just going to put the, the sun right over here. So then your projection seems uh, to be, uh, which color is more clear? I don't want to mess up everything. So this is uh, the projection, it goes there. So it makes just really one nice rectangle over there. Okay, so this is the projection, which is a nice rectangle. 
it's a it's a nice rectangle because it's just really x uh, what is it uh, from uh, what's the limits of x y is from one to negative one negative one to one yeah what is x uh, oh x is equal to one oh sorry you said y z I'm so sorry uh, that was y and z so I have to change it. You said YZ. Uh, I did for the other class the other way. So this is a good one to try one more time. This is YZ. So then you said the Y is going to be between negative one and one. Okay. So then my question is where is the Z? Starting from zero. So then I have to erase this one. Am I right? The Z starting from zero? Yes, Z starting from zero. Okay, so Z is starting from zero. And then this is negative one to one, and that's Y. And what's the highest point of the Z that can go? Uh, one, because Z is equal to X. Exactly, right? So that's just one, okay? So that's my shadow. So this shadow right over here, which is a rectangle, is going to be right over here. Again, I haven't tried this way in the other class, so that's why I'm really interested to know what, what would be the limits. So then this is just really perfect for negative one to the one for the y, and then z to be from zero to one, this is perfect. So if I can get really nice x limits, then I'm fine. What's the limits of X? Are we going from left to right in this scenario or are we gonna go from right uh, to left? The way that X is increases. The way that X okay. is increases. Okay. So zero to hit, one. You're gonna hit Y squared first. And then you're gonna hit Uh, X is, is increasing in this direction. If you see, I'm just making the pink one is increasing yeah. in this direction. This is the X. And then what do you hit first? We're gonna hit uh, Y squared first. Y squared first. How about x equals z? Doesn't it all end up being zero? Um, it seems when I'm moving on that pinky thing, I'm I'm just hitting face z and then one. And on the other hand, it seems I'm moving uh, y square and then one. Yeah, why would you hit, are you talking about like hitting the z plane the, first? The, the slanting on top, x equals z. Oh, okay. Why didn't she use the y z square? Uh, Danica, you are so... I don't hear you. What we can do is we can we can we can integrate along and along the y squared, and then like for the bottom bound and the up bound is x equals to, is the x equals to one, and then we make another integral. Yeah. We put it minus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, like from y squared equals to z, and then the bottom, the top one is z. Yeah, seems that's a mess. Seems that's a mess. Okay, yeah. we don't like it. Yeah. Okay, so we don't like. Want, it. You do another it's, integral. It's yeah, yeah. Okay, 
So what we can do is just really, this is the graph and that's what I've done for the other classes. Let's just really get the base to be, this is a nice one, okay? So let's just make the, okay, the setting is not here. Uh, so like the, just change the, the setting so this is, complicated so let's just say you want to just make this shadow to be on xy plane that's not that much bad okay so if you set it to be on xy plane as you see over here the graph is right there i think i can just really copy the graph so on the xy plane you have just really a parabola cut it with the x equals one right and then you can set it in type one or type two this is what you see in the base thing, in the parabola shape is your base one, okay? So then you have, this is the base one, and I'm going to just really have a roughly three-dimensional graph because I want to show you how it's, it's changing. Oopsie, we prefer to see it in this direction because it's really nicer. Okay. I think I made it in the other direction. That was more clear. So imagine that was your graph, okay? I'm just mixing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know yours, yeah? This is your, your generation, always fighting. Okay, so that was my graph. Uh, what I have done is just uh, make this base to be right over here, and which means just your x, y should, should be your base, your base, okay? So then you, what's the limits of integration? Can you tell me, do you want to do in type one or type two? Type one or type two? Um, if you did type two, Means that. your y is moving from y is moving from negative one to the one, yeah. right? And then the x, so the x is moving how? The x is moving. moving from here to here. Yes. Which is from y square to the one. Fine. I agree with me. Everything yeah. is fine. Yes. And then uh, the easy one is the dz now. Am I right? Because Z is moving from the Z bot, the bottom piece is zero, mm -hmm. and the Z top, and the top was X. Uh, yeah, Z is equal to X. And that's it, you're done. Your row is constantly K, so that gives you the mass. Okay? So again, from this section, really, what I want you to learn is this thing, right? So learn uh, how to set the limits of integration because the formula is provided for you. So if you just set the limits of integration, you can just easily integrate and you can just calculate what is your X bar, Y bar, and Z bar, okay? So I think uh, some of you, if you know physics, you know out of the, if you know physics, you don't have to. If you know a little, a little bit about the centroid, you can tell me one of this one is going to be zero out of a, uh, sorry, out of uh, X bar, Y bar and Z bar, one of them you don't need to compute is zero because of the way that the graph is symmetrical. Yeah, Nora's got a good question. Um, on something like that, like I kind of guessed like type two, would it, how would you, I mean, is it more difficult to do type one? And if it is, how difficult is it, is it, is it to I don't decide think so, no. which one to do? No, 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 you can just write it down, no? If, as long as it's not two pieces, as long as you don't have to repeat the process two times, it could be either one, right? So if you go from zero to one, if you go from zero to one, this is dx and then dy, this is when I'm writing in type one, mm -hmm. right? right? And then uh, dy is going to be, uh, moving from here right so it's just from here to here so it's going to be from square roots oh sorry it's x 
square root of x to square. So maybe it looks ugly because you have to take care of your square root. Otherwise, I don't think it's hard or it's just really wrong. It's possible, it's same step. It's not twice integration, it's really one time. It's not two different pieces. The only thing is you need to take care of or plug in minus a, uh, square root of x to the x square root of x. Does it make sense? It could be this way, huh? Yeah. And it's not that much math. And then you wouldn't consider switching this to a polar? Oh, no. As long as I don't have circle, no. Okay, good. No. That would be disaster, huh? <laughs> disaster. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. You, you won't get really a nice integrand. It's just really a lot of work. Uh, physics, can you tell me which of these numbers are going to be zero? Since the graph is symmetrical, where the center of mass is sitting? Your dy will be zero? Uh, the, the middle, yeah, your middle one is going to be zero. You don't need to compute it because the, this, the mass is sitting right in the middle. And since you're uh, just having really symmetrical graph in terms of the x-axis, so then your y value is going to be zero. You can compute it. It's exactly the same setting, the same formula, but at the end you will get zero. So if you guess it, so that's fine. If not, you have to compute it and get the zero at the end, okay? And then if you are lo looking for really number, what was the number after just taking care of those limits? So this is just really calculation is here. I think calculation is really straightforward. You don't need to worry. And that's what you said, because it's symmetrical, the y is going to be zero because it's right on the x-axis. And then you can just do the calculation. Okay, so set the limits of integration is the main thing. If I set it one times, it's going to be the same for all of the others. Okay, I don't change the set. The only thing is for one of them, you have to add x multiply by the row. For the other one, you have to z multiply by the row, okay? But the setting, the limits is also going to be whatever you have decided in first one. Okay, so I'm going to back to the formula and just remind you, this is going to be all the process that you must to do, but we decided to just say this is zero, so I'm not worried about the, the middle one because the middle one is zero. But everything is going to be same because the limits of integration is really for same solid, right? The limits of integration is for the same solid. The only thing is once I have x multiply to uh, uh, integrate, and then the other one I have y to multiply to integrate, then I have z. So integrand is different, so the result is different. But the limits of integration is the main thing that I want to practice. Fine? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that was it for this section. I'm going to give you a break. I don't know what time is it. Peter always, I think he's listening to the news. It's 12.30 ah! right now. Why you didn't tell me to stop somewhere? Uh, somebody wrote on my paper. Yeah, it. that was me. I think if I maximize, I don't see what you wrote. Oh wait, no. If it's red, I don't think that was me. I wrote the same thing. Oh, that. If you are. Uh, that may have been me. You wrote the red one. I think that's just a problem, and I maximize. I don't see what you wrote. Yeah, I. I was doing the dot. Oh wait, now I see my own, my own thing. Well, I'm gonna go erase it. Mm, this is moving for me. Yeah, I tried to erase it. Okay, so let's just uh, uh, maybe stop for a few minutes, five minutes. Peter took his own break a while ago. Yeah, that's what he said. Either, do you really go back and listen to the lectures? I see no one click on the uh, YouTube videos or lectures. 
And I see I don't have all of my uh, students here. So does it mean I should worry somebody is? That's fine. As long as you I do. I attend class, so I don't go to YouTube. Yeah, and that that makes sense. Okay, so if you are here and listening, you really don't need to go. Uh, it was just really taking note, and you have everything. And I think for your class right now, I have everyone here. So as long as you're here, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Where? On YouTube is harder to stay there? For me, I have I have my phone here and I'm on a computer, which means that if I want to, I can multitask. Mm. So it, it's not too much of a problem mm. unless I'm so bored that I start sleeping. Uh, so I think that why that to have the force monster to wake up. <laughs> I used to take a walk to the class, so it woke me up. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's what I need, really. Sitting on the chair, not, I'm not going to be slippy at all because I'm teaching, but it's hard. It's just really the backache for a long time sitting on the chair. That's why you stand up, move your chair, and do squats. Yeah. <laughs> Why squad? Squad is hard. <laughs> it is something easier. <laughs> be fair. It's supposed to be hard. Yeah. But I'm going to stand. We don't have that uh, fancy virtual background on the phone. It does have only here. I don't know even I have it here or not. I've never used my uh, camera here. Where's the camera? Oh, we have to download. Ah, oh, you're trying to get your virtual background there. Now you're at the beach. <laughs> but the thing, the thing is that that camera shows the top. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because it's the iPad. And the other one, the one that I use as camera, then you can see me. Uh, doesn't have that option. That's like mine where I'm at the uh, library. Yep. Mm. I've got lots of books to keep myself busy. Mm, I don't see you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in the... Yeah, you have to get the chat. Mm. Videos. It would be a good idea if we add a picture of ourselves, right? Because for all of you, it's just uh, giving your name right over here. Yeah. No one has a picture. Yeah, that's what I have when I don't. When I yeah, that's, that's a good one. I have only just, yours. 
just has my video or my picture on there when I don't have a video going. Yeah, this is a good idea. So I really have to sit that way then. At least I don't miss your faces. <laughs> I don't see you anymore, right? Some way we have to start using some videos or chat that we can see each other. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes more, huh? Maybe 15 minutes to finish. Uh, what is in 12.6 and 12.7? It's just really uh, the easier way. Uh, yes. Uh, this is really the easier way of doing the triple integration in somehow different in, in different I will say problems or different uh, surfaces is easier to do. So the cylindrical coordinate one um, uh, the cylindrical coordinate one, I'm reading your chat. So the cylindrical coordinate <laughs> like a warning. Yeah. So <laughs> the cylindrical coordinate one is really what we have tried it. I mean, it's not really new because what it's a cylindrical coordinate, if you have had X, Y, and Z in rectangular coordinate, and you have decided to move to the polar or two dimensional, and you kept the Z to be Z, that's what we call cylindrical coordinate. So cylindrical coordinate is basically three dimensional of your polar system, right? So your three dimension of your polar system is called your cylindrical coordinate. So we don't have any problem with the cylindrical coordinate thing. So the uh, triple integral in cylindrical coordinate, we will use it for cylinder. As long as it is a cylinder or paraboloid, we like to use it. Uh, so that's what it says. If you have a three dimensional coordinates of X, Y, and Z, you can move it to the cylindrical coordinate. So as long as you just move, you, you, you keep your t two dimensional to be R and theta and the third dimension to be the Z, that's what it's called uh, cylindrical coordinate system. So it's nothing new. Three dimensional version of polar is what we call cylindrical coordinate. So it does have exactly same formulas. X is R cosine, Y is R sine, Z is as it is, Z is Z, right? And then R squared is X squared plus Y squared. So the formulas are the exactly the same way. So I just need to be careful from now so on what is the word itself, right? Otherwise I'm, I'm fine with the, the format. It's just really moving to the polar and keep the Z to be Z. So that's it. So for example, here it's a point which has a coordinate in a rectangular system to be X, Y, and Z. So then what would be in cylindrical coordinate? Basically means keep the Z to be Z, and then give me what would be R and theta here. So then you are fine, All right? So then if I graph it right over here, uh, you remember when we graph it, it's just really to see which angle do you choose, right? So you have a positive negative over here. So this is just really the point, okay? So you can just say, this is my angle, or you can say, this is my angle. So either one is fine, right? So that's just the, R and theta coordinate. So just really transformation or the equations are the same. R squared is going to be X to the second plus Y to the second. So then R squared is going to be 18. R is going to be square root of 18. And then angle is going to be tan inverse of Y divided by X. So is negative three divided by three, but again, there are uh, just based on the graph, you can decide which one is it, right? So it's in, uh, it could be quadrant number two or four, but since we graphed, we know it's quadrant number four. You can say it's pi over four negative, or you can say what is the positive part? Seven pi over four, right? Seven pi over four, either one is fine, right? So it means your coordinate, R pi over four, Z as it is, or seven pi over four, Z as it is. So either one is fine. So that's the only thing that we changed, right? So the X, Y moving to the polar and keep the Z to be Z. So that's what we called 
uh, uh, what is it? Cylindrical coordinate. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Question. Okay, so these are the steps right over here. The reason that we call them cylindrical coordinate because that's the simplest way to write the cylinder equation. That's it. So the simplest way to write the cylindrical, uh, sorry, cylinder equation is cylindrical coordinate. So if I am in two dimensional and I just write R equals two in polar, so that is just really circle, right? But if you are in three dimensional and you just say R equals three in cylindrical, Mm. Uh, this is going to be cylinder with the radius of three, right? So this is going to be cylinder with the radius of three. And that's it. So it's the simplest way of writing cylinder and it, that's why it's called cylindrical coordinate. So uh, can you guess or try to see, how about if you just have the equation of z equals r, what would be the shape in cylindrical coordinate? So it's a three-dimensional solid, it's a surface, right? So what would be the shape if z equals r? Here? Any other guess? So let's see, Z equals zero, R equals zero. If you just move it, Z to be one unit up, R is going to be one unit up. So move it Z to be one unit up, radius is going to be one. If you move it up. Wait, a, a paraboloid? Uh, any other guess? A cone? It is a cone. Uh, you can see the, from the geometric explanation that I'm writing here is a cone, or you can just say, okay, so R is going to be X squared plus Y squared, right? So that's the equation. So then when it says Z equals R, basically means Z equals X squared plus Y squared, which is really the equation of the cone in cylindrical, sorry, in rectangular coordinate. Yes, that's a cone. Still, it looks nicer, right? So when we say this form, for setting the limits of integration, comparing this rectangle, sorry, uh, cylindrical form, the cylindrical form is much, much simpler than x squared plus y squared square root. So then integration is easier, setting is easier, okay? Yes, that's a cone. And I'm going to practice because we have practiced actually one problem. One of the problem that we did in previous it was just really uh, using the cylindrical coordinate. If you remember, I'm, I'm talking about this example. When we practice this example, was just really y equals x squared plus z squared, and then y equals four. That was just really transfer here to be in polar and adding to the y. So that was a cylindrical coordinate. We already know uh, what is the setting for cylindrical coordinate because we have practiced that example in 12.5. But this is just really to remind us, don't forget, if it is a polar, it does have that extra factor when you turn into the uh, cylindrical coordinate. So it's just the same Jacobian that we have had. So it means you plug in, really doesn't change. The X is really same R cosine, and then Y is really R sine. You keeping the Z to be Z, but don't forget, that's just really a polar type of the system. So it does have the same uh, Jacobian or extra factor when you move it to the uh, cylindrical coordinate, okay? The setting that you see over here is telling you start from the, 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 the angle first, and I told you always that's just really for 99% of the time, angle is first because it's always constant in our level for now, okay? 
So I'm going to practice at least one example uh, to set the limits of integration in uh, cylindrical coordinate. And I just have really one or two examples here because the cylindrical coordinate is nothing new. So it's really same as polar system. But setting is really nice. Setting is, I like to just really practice more problems because uh, you will see how lovely is moving to the new coordinate system or how easier you can just integrate uh, when you're moving to the new coordinate system instead of staying in X, Y, Z. And that's why we are learning uh, more coordinate system, okay? So uh, do you see we have had uh, really so many of this X squared plus Y squared, X squared plus Y squared, this is a sign. So this is really the sign to say, okay, this seems easier to do in cylindrical coordinate. Does it make sense? So if you see, uh, go. Uh, so if you see you have so many of X squared plus Y squared, let's start, uh, 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 I will just set the problem and then I will finish it, okay? Uh, so that's really maybe less than five minutes. But if you need to go, that's just, it's your time and you, you can go. So if you have so many X squared plus Y squared, that's a sign to use the cylindrical coordinate, okay? And especially if you have a cylinder, that's another sign to use the cylindrical coordinate, okay? Cylinder is easier to use cylindrical coordinate. So then I have, one thing I have is just really cylinder in the radius of the one. And then uh, this is number one. Number two is just really the z equals four. So it's stopping at z equals four. So this is just four units high. And then the other one is a parabolic uh, because this number is one, it says it's just really negative. So it's upside down because of negative sign, right? So this is upside down because of negative sign. And that's it. It says to be inside the cylinder. So I'm going to shade it in something lighter. I don't want to be this much dark. So uh, to be inside the cylinder, it has to be above the paraboloid and it has to be below the plane of Z equals four. So it's just right there. You can imagine in, when you see the bottle of the wine, all of the bottle of the wine has this curvy shape on the bottom, I mean most of them. So it seems you are finding the volume of your wine inside the bottle. Is the graph clear? Yes. So yes, what's the... What's the radius of the shadow? What's the radius of the base? So if this is the base, what's the radius of that base in two dimensional? That's just really my cylinder, right? So this is really my cylinder. The cylinder, uh, which was just really X squared plus Y squared equals one, is just really the bottle, and that's just really making my radius. There's nothing really to find, right? So the base is going to be exactly the cylinder base, which is just really circular with the radius of the one. And then give me the polar setting. Full circle is right this. Yes. Zero to two pi. Radius? Zero to one. And then Jacobian thing, extra factor. And the, list, the last one is the Z. Okay, so I'm going to make it darker when I'm moving on the Z direction, let's say is a red. So when I'm moving the Z direction based on this shaded region, I hit this one first. This is my first thing that I hit. This is my last thing. I never hit the cylinder. Right? Cylinder has nothing to do with the Z because cylinder equation doesn't have Z. But what I hit is just really, I will say Z bot is going to be one minus X square minus Y square. And then Z top is going to be four. So that is one minus R square. One minus R square, 
to the four. And I have had something to integrate. I'm going to put it inside. It seems the integrand was given to me. So this integrand, I just put it inside. Okay, and that's it. This is really nice. Integration is super easy. I mean, it has nothing to do with any of the techniques of U substitution. It's really direct UN is UN plus one divided by it. Okay, I'm going to stop here. So this is my setting and that would be enough. So this is for cylindrical coordinate. And I have one more nice, lovely question. This is a nice one. I will try it next time, okay? This is a really nice one. But again, I can't do anything without the graphing. And the good news is we have all technology to see the graph. But the still sit and just really practice for any of these things is what you need to uh, know before setting the limits of integration, okay? Do I have any question, any comment here? Nope. Okay. If you don't have any question, don't forget you can always request personal individual Zoom meeting for office hours, okay? So if you think it's something hard for you to follow like in the class or like in just homework you can just really email me and request for individual meeting right so the office hours is really free anytime during the day so if you request me however it, is, it works for you i try to make it okay no question uh, i have a quick question about a calendar mm -hmm. Um, so I see it as uh, next week we're gonna have a another exam, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but on the like on the syllabus that's on the calendar on the syllabus only so that we only have three exams in the final. And that's impossible to do this time, right? So we are not in the schedule anymore. Unfortunately, I wish I could, but that's just really what we had to do it. So since the, there was just really in, in, in class exam and it was possible to do uh, in this way, it's just really what I, I decided to make the changes. I, everyone has to do some changes to make, to, to make it easier for students. Okay. So we do have uh, uh, exams chapter by chapter. And I, I explain why were, what was my reason to make it in that way because uh, the similarity of between two chapters of 12 and 13 was always uh, just really struggling for the students. Which one is for which question is for which chapter? Okay. So this helps you, I promise, to have cool. a separate, separate okay, so, test for separate chapters. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to have like uh, four exam and then a final. Yes, just exactly. Apply. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? And just believe me, it's a lot of work for me. It is just a lot of work. Yes, we do. Uh, because when you have more exams, it's just really one more exam for you, which you fortunately, we can just practice and do it. But when it's just for me on my side, it's going to be really uh, one exam multiplied by uh, about 35 students multiplied by two classes. So it's just really a lot of work. But I think that way that works a lot better. So it seems, yeah, the exam is going to be next Thursday. Uh, but we will find out exactly the rules. We will set what, what would be the rules to do better. But uh, as you see, there is a practice test on there. So you can just start to do more problems, OK? And Professor, I, I saw, according to our schedule, it says that midterm three for chapter 12 uh, when I click on that link, it gives me an assignment date of Thursday, April 23rd, which is two weeks from uh, this coming Thursday. Mm -hmm. I just want to confirm that that's correct. I think that's correct because we need to practice a little not bit. Not next week. I, because somebody asked me is next week. I did not check it. Okay, so 
we do have one more test for chapter 12 and then one more test for the chapter 13. And uh, I think, let me just log in one more time. You have midterm three slated for on the next week's schedule, April 11th through the 17th, but its due date says the 23rd. I think somebody need to erase this thing from our uh, overall. Yeah, I tried. It won't That's fine. Okay. We need to just put that. Did I stop recording? No, you're still recording.